still looking at GSRT A1. This kind of focuses on what I'd call dilating a line. This actually is a very funny sounding thing because you think a line is an infinite thing that goes on forever. So how do you make it two times bigger or half the size? Um, and it really isn't making the line half the size or double. You'll see kind of what we mean by dilating a line. So this is worksheet three. It really is focusing on where the center of dilation is and how it impacts objects around it. So if the center was on a line, and remember how dilations work is that you have a center and then the rays that leave from that center. And then as we dilate either by an enlargement or an expansion, those points are moved further away or closer, depending on the scale factor, but they stay upon the ray. So here, if we have, uh, notice O is uh, on our line, A and B are on our line, uh, they are rays that form a single line. So if I was to dilate, say, by 2 here, uh, all it would do is move A further down and move B further down. But notice they would stay on that line. And, and no matter what number uh, scale factor I there, whether it's positive or negative, whether it's um, a contraction or an expansion, they will just move along those two rays. So when it's on, when, it's, when the center is on the line, uh, it just forms the line. So the, no, new, no new line or no new object is created. Points are just basically scaled up and down that uh, line. As soon as the center leaves the line, it now is in the, in the business of projecting it, basically. So uh, you see here our normal, again, the way uh, a dilation works is we create our rays leaving the center. And then uh, let's say we were dilating it by two here. Everything gets doubled. Now the line um, is not getting doubled, but the points are getting pushed uh, further away, twice the distance away. So whatever a, OA's distance is, it gets pushed that same distance away. Whatever OB's distance is, it gets pushed that same amount away. And again, is then created. Now the important thing to, uh, to really realize here, the heart of this, is when you dilate things and things get moved, um, the angles are preserved. And so uh, you get angles here that match, you get angles here that match, you get beautiful parallel lines. The key to success in dilation is recognizing parallel lines are formed all throughout the diagrams and the angles are preserved and those have connection to each other. Um, just again to give you that idea that the angles are preserved, if I had a line and another line let me quickly create uh, a, a, a quick little diagram. Um, here's A, B, C. And let's say we dilate this by a half from O. What that's going to do is it's going to move line A, B closer to O, right? Because it's not on here. And line B, C is going to come closer as well. So again, using my rays, I'm going to go half that distance. Using my ray, I'm going to go half that distance. Using my ray, I'm going to go half of that distance. And notice a couple of things. Again, I'll just show the basic idea. You get the parallel lines here, you get the parallel lines here. But I also want you to notice that this original angle, ABC, right there, is copied right there. Again, that idea that dilations preserve angles. Let's take a look at a little bit of this up close. Before we go to the paper and pencil uh, version of this, let me just again demonstrate this live on a dynamic geometry. So here's our center O, uh, designated as our center. And if we select A and B and we go to dilate something here, let's say we dilate it uh, two times bigger. Uh, you can see the points here. This would be A prime and B prime. 
if I wanted to go uh, one and a half times bigger, there's one and a half, there's the A prime, there's the B prime. If I wanted to go half the size, you see them moving here. But basically, in essence, you're moving points along that those two rays, for, uh, those two opposite rays. Um, once we leave the, uh, the center off of the line and we're over here, uh, if this becomes our center, uh, we will move all points on this either further away or closer to. Again, remember that these points are moving along their rays, so you'd be, you'll be able to see that here if I select this and select my point. Here, I would be moving all points when I dilate it by, say, uh, two times bigger. So uh, let's do that. This would be two, two times the value there. You see the points there. And in doing so, we get uh, a new line, F prime, E prime, that will be parallel and will be uh, two times further away. If we were to scale the same uh, two points, F and E, but do it by a scale factor that was a reduction, like one half, things will move closer to us, but we still will have uh, those, those points will still be parallel. And again, the powerful thing is no matter uh, how we adjust those in expansions further away, a contraction is closer. Let's look at the uh, now the paper and pencil version of the same idea. We already went over this but, um, on the board, but I'll just quickly go over the idea again. Dilating a line is usually quite uh, tricky for some students because they're like, how do you make a line bigger or smaller? But it's not really that. It's about um, whether the point is on the line of di center of dilation is on or off of the line and what it does to create more lines or how it impacts it. So basically, if your center of dilation, in this case, O is on the line or in here, whether you dilate by a value like 2 or 3 or by a half, say if you dilate it by 2, A would be, you know, 2 times further away and B would be 2 times further away. But notice it just keeps uh, the line, the same line, nothing changes. Same thing if you dilate it by a half, this would be half the size and this would be half the size. But again, no new lines are formed. The idea, of course, is that... Um, uh, you know, matter, no matter how it is, if it's on the line, nothing changes. As soon as the center leaves the line, like here, uh, we get more of our normal uh, relationship taking place. So uh, the idea of when you have, you know, a dilation, it's always about from the center uh, dilating upon that ray. And so if you're going to dilate, uh, say, by a, a scale factor of three in this case, the idea is that you would do three of those, and I'm just going to uh, rough it out a little bit um, just, just to get the idea, but, you know, you would be, you know, you'd rough, uh, you'd, you'd do that value out three, and then this would go out three, and you would get a set. Part of the power of this is you would get a set of parallel lines. Dilations hold angles intact. Um, because things are proportional, they hold all their angles together. This angle matches this one, this one matches this one. And so dilations really are about uh, the idea of um, angles and about parallel lines. And so when you dilate something, a line, when the point is not on the line, it will send it further away. If you dilate something by, say, a scale factor of a half, uh, everything gets pulled in half half that distance. And so the line doesn't get bigger or smaller. But what does happen is that this uh, this distance A would come back half the distance. This distance B would come back half of its distance to get you A prime and your B prime. And you would get a set of parallel lines there in terms of that uh, creation. So the idea here is just mostly this idea of if you're on the line, you get the same line back. If you are off the line, the center is off the line, like here, you send uh, with scale factors that are like two or three, you send it further away. And then a, a scale factor that's, say, a half or a third brings it closer to that point.